Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mo's and today's episode we're going to be looking at the uh, the Dennis one more time. Um, so far you've seen me do a points clean, carburetor clean and I managed to get fuel all the way down to the um, towards the throat of the chamber of the carburetor but um, on further inspection I had, I'm not getting no fuel up into the spark plug itself when you crank it so um, I did a bit of investigation last night and spoke to a few people. I actually managed to speak to somebody last night in the south of France uh, who's got his own Dennis and uh, he, he's well in the know. I uh, had a good chat with him and uh, just learned a few little tiny tricks of a trade and what have you of, of what you should and you shouldn't be doing and uh, little tiny tricks of how to keep the machines in good, in good health. So that's that. That's much appreciated for that conversation. Um, I also mentioned to him about the oil being extremely low and he said uh, the chances are it's not at all and this is where many people make a mistake with a Dennis is that when you have the machine turned off and you check the oil, it will read low because it's not an oil sump, it's an oil reservoir. So what happens is you get a low reading when the machine's turned off because all the oil is actually in the engine itself. When you turn the machine on and, and fire it up, uh, get it nice and warm, you then check the engine um, whilst check the oil whilst the engine is running. And I thought this, this to be completely backwards to compared to what I'm, I'm used to. But so now I can assure you that's what you do. You take take your oil filler cap out, and then that, that will give you then a good reading of how much oil you've got. So I asked the question how to do an oil change, because if your oil's all all uh all in the um engine, how are you can drain the oil out. So I'm assuming you've got to tip these babies back to they just they just run out, I'm I'm assuming. So so I had a good chat with him. I spoke to a few other people about the exhaust as well. So um I've got uh, lots of people working on a new exhaust for me or a second hand exhaust for me, which is cool. Uh, but nothing's come through as of yet. So that's that. So carburetor done, points done. Um, and I've also um, take, unwound the um, fuel screw as well because that was well seated. And uh, like many carburetors, if they're wound all the way and you're never going to get any fuel through. So I've taken that out about, um, I think about two turns, two and a half turns. And I now um, can get uh, fuel up into the cylinder uh, head itself. So I'm super happy with that. But that now tells me um, but with spark, when I put the HTD back on, with spark, with fuel, with compression, there's no reason that's apparent why this machine shouldn't at least fire up and start. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to clear the deck down out of the way and get the Dennis outside, which is no easy task in itself because it is such a big machine. Um, get the Dennis out onto the lawn and uh, just show you what I've been doing. I've got a few little fuel leaks off the carburetor. I just need to have new um, gaskets put on and what have you, little um, fiber washers. That's no biggie. I can come back to that. It is only weeping, so it's not a problem. We'll get it outside and uh, we'll go for a fire up. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's try and fire this 1933 Dennis. Okay, Dennis is now out. That was a job in itself. And as you can see, you know, by the size of me compared to the machine, you can actually see how big it really is. It's an absolute monster. So let's put a bit of fuel in. And I have been recommended just to put a little tiny piece of um, two-stroke fuel in here as well. I don't go mad because I'm going to be winterizing it anyway. So a little bit of two-stroke oil as well, just to keep the engine supple. Apparently it aids towards the valves not sticking, which is a, which is one of the problems that this machine actually has apparently, but as of yet, uh, not come across that. So I'm going to get a bit of two-stroke oil. I only want a smidge. Just enough, just to wet its whistle. Let's do that. I'm going to be cranking it on. That'd be enough. I'm going to be cranking it on the lower handle because it's cold start. And from what I also understand, lots of people are saying they always use a, the lower handle anyway. They don't use a top one. They always use a lower one, which is cool. So uh, I'm going to turn the fuel on. Fuel's now on, throttle's off, gauges, dry's all disengaged. I now will engage the choke by pushing the plunger down and giving it a slight twist. And then I want to prime the carburetor bowl. Just by touching the lever on the top. 
get some fuel up in this girl. There she goes. So we've now got fuel up on the top. Um, chokes on, HT leads on. So we're good to go. Um, we're going to make sure your decompression switch, which is down here, is a little lever, a little rod that um, comes off of the engine block and onto the handle. It either pulls backwards or forwards. You want it all the way forwards. That's your decompression switch, which actually turns your engine off. Okay, not a decompression as in uh, when you're starting. Okay, you don't throw it to start it. You turn, you turn that to have it off. So now, chokes on, got fuel down, fuel's on, decompression's all right, and we're good to go. So in the bottom handle, you can hear it gurgling. That fired. With a bit of juice, a bit of throttle. That fired again then. There she goes, take the choke off. And now it's just let the old girl warm up. Okay, so she's still ticking over. I can hear that boom, 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 boom. Right, so now I'll engage the drive. Driving.
proper. Shaking. That's a serious bit of kit. Whew. That is serious. I'm not even joking. You know when you got hold of that. So what do you think? We like it? Or we don't like it? I love it. It's just pure aggression. Another word for it. Absolute pure aggression. It shakes, it rattles, it backfires. It does everything a good lawnmower should do. Let's give it one more run at the old lawn. Oh, I can't put this thing away, I tell you. We've got to check your all yet. Let's have another little run, shall we? Bit of revs. Go on, Bill. Engage the cylinder. And now the drive. Woo We're off. Look, mummy, no hands. That's serious. Sweating. That's serious. <laughs> so there you go. There's the Dennis lawnmower all now up and running. Carburetor clean, points clean. Um, just a bit of tiffling, and uh, away it went. It started pretty well for what it is. Um, they can be they can be pickles to start. Um, I did speak to um, um, somebody in south of France just yesterday, and he could get his to start. Um, he said it was running fine yesterday, so. They are a bit like that by the looks of it, but um, there you go. If you're into that sort of machinery, you have to understand that, you know, they don't start for, for first turn, it's as simple as that. So the Dennis um, is now running, the cylinder now all works. It needs to be lowered slightly for my lawn, but it is too big for my lawn. Um, what I may do, there's a big wreck down down just behind my house um, where I have, I have kids on a Sunday play football and what have you. So I may nip down on a Saturday when it's all done, uh, when I've got a seat for it and take it for a bit of a spin. That'd be quite good, stretch her legs right up. So that'd be good. Um, if anyone knows where there is an exhaust for that um, going on eBay or wherever, or if anyone's got one, let me know. Um, I'm going to be um, putting the Dennis now into the shed. It now be winterized. Put it into a shed. Put a dust sheet over it, and uh, you won't now see that machine until after the new year. And uh, I'm going to take it back out and then do a restore on it. Now, what do you think? Should I do the engine overhaul on the engine? The engine to me sounds absolutely sweet as nut. It does. I don't think it needs any work. Um, and I'm not really into taking stuff apart to, to do the engines if the engine is working fine. If the engine is broken or, or playing up, then 
I believe, to strip it down, but I don't think it does. So it may just be literally to have the engine off and what have you and respray, repaint and re-chrome, all that sort of good stuff. That's that's the way I'm going with it. Um, the grass box, I think, needs a bit of attention because it's a bit narrower at the bottom than it is at the top and doesn't quite sit straight. Uh, but apart from that, it all runs exactly as it should do. It's really gnarly. For a little gentle giant, it backfires, it rattles. You know when you've got hold of it. And if you, if you, if you forget to disengage that drive, you're going straight into the side of the house. It's as simple as that. There's no getting around it. They're a serious bit of kit. But what a lovely, fantastic sound. Um, when you get it firing just right, it just pops and bangs absolutely beautiful. And I could listen to that sort of engine all day long. Don't think my neighbours like it very much, though, because it's, it's quite noisy. But it may quieten down with the right exhaust on it, but that's the idea. If anyone knows whether it is a little roll-on um, seat for that as well, it doesn't have to be the, the correct seat for it. I can make it match best I can, and it will do. But it does need to have a, a significant arm coming out uh, because of a, the, um, the length of the handle. So if it's like the web one that's really close, that'd be no good. It's got to be relatively long and relatively high, too. Um, so you can actually get hold of that hand and spin it around in one go. So all in all, I'm quite happy. Um, thought I paid for that little lawnmower. Um, it gave me no grief at all. Um, I don't think it had been fired up in about two years from what the owner um, said who sold it to me. Uh, he had it for a good 10 to 12 years and he too bought it at auction as well. And apparently there is a company or a council I can get hold of who will have all the information with regards to that particular dentist. So I'm going to get hold of them and see what the paperwork says as well. If this is your first time in watching Mixed Mode, don't forget to hit your subscribe button, whack your bell, set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told when I've done a video or two of them on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30pm UK time. So come and join us from friends and family from all over the, all over the world, talking about small engines and just anything that comes up we have a good chat and a good muck about. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.